the 19th century was characterized by constant reactions to and revivals of previous art styles across Europe, like neoclassicism and Gothic revival, in order to keep up with changing tastes and values, both artistic and ideological. Max Klinger, a late 19th century German painter, sculptor, and printmaker, utilized both his personal interest and society's interest in the revival of old styles when he created his second intaglio printmaking cycle, entitled Opus II, or Rescues of Ovid's Victims. This cycle features scenes from three classical tragic couples from Ovid's Metamorphoses, Apollo and Daphne, Narcissus and Echo, and Pyramus and Thisbe, but with endings rewritten by Klinger to edit out the devastating tragedy in order to be more life-affirming and consistent with contemporary values and attitudes about life, supported by literary and social influences. His 1882 print, Narcissus and Echo One, exemplifies Klinger's interest in and departure from classical myths, which he combined with contemporary influences to create a print that recalls historical tradition while incorporating it with contemporary thought. Klinger's Narcissus and Echo One, an intaglio print made by mixing several different techniques of etching, is a particularly poignant example of Klinger reinventing classical myths and styles in order to better suit his own personal taste and that of his audience. By the late 19th century, the academic neoclassical style had begun to fall out of favor and was deemed too anemic by contemporary critics. So Klinger created a reactionary work of art in which he metamorphosed the style and subject matter into something lusher and more romantic, which also evokes contemporary influences from literature, philosophy, and science. Klinger was fascinated with mythological themes and utilized them as metaphoric imagery for human motivations, life circumstances, and the agonies of artistic creation. But in Narcissus and Echo I, from Rescues of Ovid's Victims, he reinvented the classical tale, transforming it into a much more lighthearted story and straying from the themes of despair and tragedy. In the print, we see the three Ovidian couples standing beyond a lake being watched by two figures who appear to be hybrid creatures like satyrs or fauns. They are all portrayed in a lush outdoor setting encompassed by architectural framing and friezes beneath the scene, depicting two young people who are being shot by Cupid's arrows, emphasizing the romantic theme. Klinger drew upon the ancient Greek and Roman past, but also innovated by utilizing a pictorial style and technique that departs from neoclassical tradition and by altering the endings of the classical myths. Intaglio printing, which includes the techniques of etching, engraving, and dry point, is when the artist scratches or cuts into a metal plate and applies ink so that the ink settles into the lines and can then be printed onto paper. Engraving was very popular amongst many neoclassical artists because it produces clean lines, while artists like Rembrandt utilized etching and dry point for their richness and the fuzzy effect that they produce. Klinger combined multiple intaglio techniques in Narcissus and Echo One, especially etching and dry point, which becomes apparent in the scratchy quality of the main scene and which recalls master printmakers of the past, like Rembrandt. However, the rich and textured lines of the main scene are sharply contrasted with the clearer lines in the framing and the illustrations at the bottom, creating a juxtaposition between the two textures. The techniques used could even offer insight into the mood of the print. The main scene of the three couples is emotional and romantic, which is conveyed through the energetic lines produced by etching or dry point, whereas the framing and illustrations of the two young people shot by Cupid's arrows appears more like a recreation of a historical frieze made in a time far removed from when Klinger was alive. 
This makes the print appear like a scene that the viewer is watching from behind a window, with the clean and rational layout of the border and the lush and rich scene of the mythological tale. This also allows the viewer to project into the print as one of the hybrid figures in the front because they're watching the scene unfold just as we are. While Klinger's connection to classical history and mythology in Narcissus and Echo One is unambiguous, he also utilized contemporary influences to appeal to a knowledgeable contemporary audience in order to keep them engaged. One example is the detached point of view present in the print, which evokes German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche's idea of the view from above. The view from above is when the viewer sees events unfolding from a detached point of view like a god on Mount Olympus in classical myths. In Klinger's print, both we, the viewers, and the satyr figures in the foreground are watching the scene from afar, creating a layered effect of the point of view. Additionally, the lush natural setting and romantic theme of the print may be a nod to the newly conceived theory of evolution, which Darwin hypothesized in the mid-1800s. It is characterized by themes of natural abundance, fertility, and transformation, which can be seen in Klinger's print through the setting, romantic couples, and hybrid figures, respectively. By combining both classical and contemporary influences in his print Narcissus and Echo One, Max Klinger creates a print that takes part in the artistic tradition and root deep-rooted history, but also excites and engages his contemporary audience with references to modern thought. Klinger played with ancient myths and altered the story much in the way that Ovid did with his metamorphoses in the first century, taking previously established myths and changing them to suit his current times. In, in Klinger engages in the artistic tradition of depicting classical myths while making them his own and approaching tradition in a different way than earlier movements like neoclassicism did.